Right, hello everybody and uh, welcome to Talking Maths in Lockdown. Um, so we're the, the four of us uh, from Talking Maths in Public. Um, if you've not been to one of these before, then what we're doing is just having a meeting each week for uh, talking about maths communication. So this is the last of the regular ones. We'll, we'll say more about the uh, what's going to happen afterwards um, in, in, in the coming months about this type of meeting. Um, but first of all, I'll just say that I'm Kevin Houston. I'm a lecturer at the University of Leeds and also the Education Secretary of the London Mathematical Society. And I'll hand over to uh, Sam. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Durbin. I am usually based at the Rowan Institution where I manage our secondary maths masterclass program, but I am on furlough at the moment. So I'm spending my time doing TMIP and other bits and pieces like that. And hand over to Katie. Hello, I'm Katie Steckles. I do maths outreach in many different forms and uh, work part time in university and do various other things. And they're part of TV. And I'm handing over to Ben. Hi, Ben Sparks here. I work for the AMSP for half of my time at the University of Bath for some small fraction of my time, which I can never quite work out, and freelance for some of my time doing maths outreach and uh, teach training was a maths teacher for 10 years and uh, now do some freelance at AMSP and talking maths in public stuff and occasionally number file things. Hi. Bye. Okay, thanks. Right, so um, we've got four speakers today, so we'll need to uh, move this along briskly. So um, people who deliver maths outreach activities as part of a university or some large organisation uh, will find that this aspect of the work has been uh, disrupted. So, um, so aside from the issue of moving regular teaching online, outreach programs are often seen as optional stroke, less well supported by universities, partly because its impact is hard to measure. And staff do, uh, doing this are often volunteers and they're stretched to capacity. So today we've invited four guests to share their experience of working within universities doing outreach, stroke public engagement, stroke public, public math, sorry, public maths, uh, stroke maths communication. Uh, including people who have responsibility for delivering outreach within a maths department and people in more general public engagement roles. So we'll hear from people who are furloughed and people who are carrying on doing their jobs from home and the approaches they've taken to lockdown outreach or not. Um, so afterwards we'll have a Q&A and that may go on past 4pm um, but we'll, we'll definitely finish at 4.30. There'll be a chance at 4pm, we'll, we'll have a little stop there, a definite stop at 4pm we'll Gives you a chance to leave but there will be a continuation up till 4 30. Um, we are recording the guest speakers and the Q&A so if you want to ask a question but don't want to speak on the recording uh, but you do have a question please uh, ask in the chat or in a private message to Sam and uh, we'll ask the question for you and I should remind you that there's a uh, code of conduct which a link should be appearing in the chat um, so uh, Please make sure you've read that at some point. Okay, so the, really we have a code of conduct and uh, it's because we want to be uh, people to be welcoming and polite and considerate and respectful and uh, to use gender neutral language. So uh, quick reminder that people here are sharing things with with the people in the call so ask if you want to share anything beyond that. Okay, um, and so what uh, Without further ado, I think I'll hand over to Katie, who's going to introduce our speakers. Okay, fantastic. So as uh, Kevin said, we've got four speakers today and uh, they're variously from different kind of approaches to this topic. Uh, so I'm largely going to let them introduce themselves since part of what we've asked them here today is to talk about what they do. Uh, so first of all, from the University of Leeds, uh, Ruth Holland. Hi, thanks, Katie. Um, yeah, so I work in the STEM outreach team at the University of Leeds, so working with schools and colleges all over the UK. Um, I'm also involved in lots of other maths organisations as well, like Maths World UK. Um, but from the point of view of the university outreach, um, we just notice that things are just continuously changing at the moment. So we're learning more about what we can do online and people are getting more confident in that, which is a new way of working for all of us. Um, and we're also getting more of a sense of how long lockdown's going to last. 
um, and even as schools um, start up again, life for them is very different and so life in our outreach team is going to be different for the foreseeable future. Um, we're probably looking to deliver most of our outreach or possibly all of our outreach online over the next academic year as well as the rest of this one. Um, so I can really only speak today about what we currently are doing, what we're currently not doing and some of the issues that we found along the way. Um, so what we are doing, we're concentrating our efforts on some of the key groups, which are usually those that are making decisions at the moment. So the GCSE groups, year 10 and year 11, and A-level groups, year, year 12 and 13. Um, so our two main priorities are looking after our widening participation programmes and supporting some of the widening participation partner skips partnership schemes that we're involved with um, and also moving our summer school program online and um, our open days online. Where we can, where we had bookings for schools um, just as lockdown started, we've also tried to work with them if, if it was possible or invite them to, to a, a, an upcoming event. Um, I actually work in the general outreach area of our university, so there's lots of different subject teams there. So we've been lucky that we've been able to share expertise amongst ourselves, so including several different teams that are working on summer schools. So we've all been learning about this online life um, and helping each other out and also looking at some of the external organisations like um, Neon and Uniconnect and, and Brightside and, and trying to get expertise where we can. Um, what we're not doing, so we, we recognise that there's already a great deal of really excellent online materials out there, especially in maths, there's so many wonderful resources that we've heard about for the last few weeks. Um, so we're not really trying to quickly produce more online resources. You know, they might develop over time as we're working in this area, but we're more than happy to be signposting people to the good things that are already out there. Um, some of the um, main things that we've had to consider, um, a big one is safeguarding. So um, as we move in online, we have to think about um, which platforms we can use, making sure that they have um, the right sort of features so that we can moderate any of our online activity properly. So including if they've got breakout rooms. So we need to be able to have control over video cameras and muting people, disabling private chat. Um, and also we've, we've developed a code of conduct for young people and their carers so that we can make that as safe as possible. Um, one sort of slight issue with this is that sometimes it makes it um, difficult for the students to enjoy some of the more social aspects of our events, especially for the summer schools. Um, so it's more difficult for them. I think we just have a connection problem from Ruth. Uh, we'll give her a chance to uh, rejoin if we can. I mean, social events that she was talking about are very difficult when your mic just shuts off like that. So. <laughs> uh, store up questions for Ruth. Uh, maybe, Katie, should we go to the next speaker? What do you think? Uh, we could do. I suspect she won't be long coming back in. But um, yeah, for the purposes of time, it's yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> she's been sort of interrupted think... mid-flow, but we'll see. Um, hey, I'm just posting I'm something. I you. Ruth's back. Ah, Ruth's back. Hello, Ruth. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm... Yes. <laughs> so this is one of the issues that we're having to face at the moment. I hope that doesn't happen again, but um, yeah, I don't know exactly when it broke, it broke me off. But I was sort of saying that the social aspect is something that is more difficult for our students, um, especially during summer schools, which a big part of that is actually getting that experience of going away to university and meeting new friends. Um, so one of the things that we're intending to use is 
something like Kahoot, so an interactive quiz software that also allows some open questions. So at least we can we can run that and the group at large can find out more about each other. So even if it's just whereabouts they've come from and those those sorts of things just to give them some sort of feeling. Um, so uh, my next uh, issue that we have to deal with is technology issues. So I think, feel like I've already illustrated that. Um, but you know, from choosing which platform to work with, I think most of um, my colleagues have, have decided to use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, Ultra, which is what our academics use for their online delivery. So it's something that they've, they've already, they're already used to, to a certain extent, and it gives those sorts of features um, for safeguarding um, and an insight into how they will be learning for online delivery. <clears throat> if they were to come to our university at the moment. Um, we have to think about the how much live content, how much recorded content, how interactive we can make the sessions, um, how much screen time we're, we're, um, we're sort of forcing our participants to have. So um, we're using some recorded content to give a sense of what the campus is like, what it's like to live in halls, what's the student union like. But for our maths summer school, for instance, we're really aiming to have just live sessions. Um, but with uh, making them shorter than they would normally be and having extended breaks to sort of give that time away from the screen. Um, but also giving them some time to sort of think about and work with some of the maths that they've seen so that they can make sort of the, the class sessions more interactive as well. Um, we are aware that some of the students might have issues um, live streaming. So we probably will, will record those sessions but make them available for those that are participating because we want them to feel as free to say whatever they want you know, we don't want them to feel like whatever they say has been recorded for posterity. Um, one thing that's really important is, is reaching our WAN in participation students and some of the most hard to reach students at the moment are the ones that um, will have maybe no computer or only a shared computer or poor internet, um, no personal workspace and it is really hard to work with those students currently. Um, especially when yeah, libraries and schools have still been closed. We're hope, hopeful that as schools and public buildings are opening more, they will be able to get more involved in some of the digital work that we will be doing. Um, but at the moment, we're really using schools to be a conduit between um, us and those students. So we're planning on anything that we and make available online to have some PDF files, including transcripts of any videos. And, you know, hopefully schools will um, print out and share those resources with students that are unable to work with us online. Um, but, you know, we're also aware that there'll be some advantages to this period. So we won't be constrained by the space we're in. We'll have we can increase capacity for some of our sessions and also work with some students who might never have been able to get to the university at all. So, um, you know, we look forward to those advantages. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I thought I was muted, but I was not muted. So I just muted myself in order to say something. You know how it is. Uh, we've all been there. Uh, so, yes, thank you very much, Ruth. Um, it's I mean, I suspect there'll be overlap in what all of our speakers are saying, but I think it's nice to sort of hear that kind of, it sounds like you've been doing an incredible amount of work since uh, since everything's gone locked down. So that's impressive. Um, so we've, if you have got any questions, uh, we're trying to put links to things that people are mentioning in the chat as well. But if you've got any questions, please stick them in there. Um, so we can move on to our next speaker from the University of Oxford. It's Marilee Grady. Hi everyone, it's lovely to see some um, familiar names and faces here today. Um, so if you don't know me, I work at the University of Oxford. I'm the Outreach Events Coordinator in Maths and the Schools Liaison in the Department of Statistics. And typically I would say my job involves organising large events, um, which is not a great place to be right now. Um, 
So um, I organized the Oxford Maths Festival, which is the department's main event that sort of focuses on the community um, around Oxford. It's aimed at families um, with youngish children, so age about five to 13. I also run our main girls conference, which is aimed at girls in year nine to 12. Um, and that runs um, in January every year. So those events we managed to sneak in um, before uh, lockdown and before the coronavirus was really a thing. Um, but since then, I've, I've actually ended up now being um, on furlough. And most of the events that were planned for March and April have, have really just evaporated. Um, so before, um, before I was furloughed, we ended up running our departmental um, open days online um, very successfully mostly thanks to the work of my colleague James Munro who did an immense amount of work at a very steep learning curve of how to integrate all the different technologies um, how to make everything work so that people could ask questions while things were ongoing and we could actually have some of our undergraduates answer some of those questions so it felt a bit like if you were coming to an actual open day asking questions and speaking to an undergraduate and getting some of that communication going. Um, so really a lot of the things that we would normally be doing in this period has, has mainly just been cancelled um, and we've been focusing largely on our open days and planning for the summer schools that would have happened um, in July and August. Now I've not been so involved with those um, since about the beginning of May. Um, but my colleagues are certainly still working behind the scenes. Um, it's difficult to see how the things that I used to do will be able to function into 2021, really. Um, I think until we can reliably run large gatherings, those things will be difficult to do. Um, and it's also difficult to see how you can really replicate them in an online environment. I think a lot of the benefit of the girls' conference is that you get girls together in a room and they get to talk to each other, they get to have that camaraderie. So it's difficult to see how to translate a lot of that into online. Um, similarly, the maths, um, maths festival, it would be tricky to see how you would do that really online. Having said that, um, we were actually uh, so James Monroe and me and um, my colleague Vicky Neal, who I see us here today, um, we were already talking about doing more online provision even before all this talk um, about the pandemic. So I think this is a really good opportunity for us to work more on that, to focus on um, our widening participation, um, much as we said, um, and really work out what, what can be done in that aspect whilst we maybe can't do um, some of the other things. Um, I think what I've been thinking about over this period of time has been a lot that one of the things we need to be really clear about when we're thinking how do we work in this new world is that we need to be clear who we're trying to reach, um, what we can actually offer them, and really think about how inclusive it is. Now, we already mentioned about that some of the most hard to reach students are the ones that don't have that access um, to a computer or a, a working space or have to share computers or that, that kind of thing. And I think really taking a step back and thinking who is it that we particularly need to work with at this time um how can we best support them um, and what what can we actually offer and also i think it's really important at the moment to not try to let replicate more than what is out there um i don't know if anyone else has started to feel a little bit of the fatigue of doing everything online um, but I, I've certainly started to experience that already. And that's just, I think as a parent, you might find that there is just so much information out there that I think we need to be really clear about actually just signposting to existing things where that's appropriate um, and not try and reproduce everything else, but just make it clear so that parents can find what they need in terms of support um, in the best, best possible way. Um, I definitely don't want to be bombarding and people with a lot of new things. Having said that, I think there is a place um, for a little bit of light entertainment for, for those students in particular who are missing that kind of interaction. Um, at Oxford, again, um, for, for a more sort of public, um, a, a public engagement point of view, we started asking our students and staff to submit any, any art that they were doing um, during lockdown to keep busy. And we're planning to put that up as a bit of a, um, online exhibition just to kind of show people 
that there is math and art and that actually that can be something that can keep you busy, it can open up some discussion. Um, so I guess my thoughts is that at the moment, universities really should be focusing on, on their core strengths and their core mission. Um, and we may need to put on ice some of our events um, and focus on other areas instead. That's my 10 cents. There we go. <laughs> It, the, the keyboard shock is really handy if you're on the right window, it turns out. Uh, so don't click anything else. That's the that's the key. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Marilee. Again, it's it's we're all going through this, I think. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of things there that made me think, yeah, yeah, that is definitely a thing to think about. Um, and it's really good to hear that people are thinking about accessibility and, and inclusion with all of this stuff as well, because this is going to be one of those things that kind of creates more divisions if we're not careful. Um, okay, so on to our third speaker from the University of Manchester, it's Deanne Johnson. Hi everyone. Just before I flip into showing you my slides, given that this is outreach, I feel like everyone else in this session should have an opportunity to say something. So in the chat, here's a quick question for you. What key characteristic, skill or quality do you think you can bring to this new normal that we keep talking about in terms of outreach? Go. What is the key characteristic, skill or quality that you can bring to this new adventure that we're in with regards to public engagement? So I'm going to type mine in. Oh, I'm seeing enthusiasm. More enthusiasm. Don't forget, you can always repurpose what other people do. So if someone stole enthusiasm, get it out there. <laughs> Long hair. Thanks, Ben. Speaking personally, I assume. Let's go two more, at least two more. Yeah, networks, connections, definitely. Yeah, patience. Patience with te technology, patience with the environment that we're within, patience with even ourselves, actually, because we're all kind of out there and wanting to get on, and, and sometimes the other things are hampering us. Connections, absolutely. Ah, dog appearances on Zoom calls. Thanks, Sammy. I hope that he or she is going to make an appearance if you do have a dog. <laughs> oh, Sam, thanks very much for that one. I'll let people read. Absolutely. And you've actually started playing the other game that I was going to introduce, and that is Zoom conference call. So I'd be very disappointed if we don't have a toddler come in or a grumpy teenager, or in my case, it'll be a partner who's um, drilling something outside who will come in to ask, is it okay to make a cup of tea? So um, yeah, keep that going. In the meantime, assuming technology wants to play, I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. So, I'm Deanne Johnson. I am the Public Engagement Manager at the University of Manchester. And I'm not going to specifically talk about maths outreach because my remit is so much bigger than that, but I will highlight some of the great public engagement activities, including those within maths that are taking place. And I've noticed that one of my colleagues um, is here today, Naomi, and I am going to represent some of the things that she is definitely doing with her research group, but she would be best placed to answer more specific some of those fantastic activities. So um, those of you who um, have uh, been to Manchester, you know it looks like this. The sun is always shining, the sky is always blue, flowers and trees are always out in bloom, yeah? Um, and you may be aware that the University of Manchester is one of the largest within the UK, and we have these three um, key strategic goals. Excellent research, teaching and student experience and this third thing called social responsibility and for us um, social responsibility um, encompasses everything from research impact and equality and diversity to engaging with our communities and public engagement and the reason I mention these things to you is because in part our response to um, to the virus has been how do we as an institute think about what we do in terms of our research, what we do in terms of our teaching and learning and what we do in terms of being a socially responsible institution and what does that public engagement look like. So the university has been um, 
running a number of central campaigns and um, taking that point about not reinventing the wheel, doing a lot of signposting and pulling together and um, pulling together resources and sharing those. It has created some new resources as well. I'll talk you through a couple of those. But I think um, the fact that we're a university on a devolved model means we've got some really great central activity that's happening, but we've got a lot of really great grassroots happening um, with our academics and our researchers and through our schools and our departments. So I'm gonna try and highlight some of those things to you. And um, because this isn't about our research response, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but I will kind of mention the people aspect because there has been, I guess, with um, not only our institute, but a lot of institutes, a huge response in terms of volunteering, volunteering within our own communities and volunteering within um, communities that are on the university's doorstep. And so I really wanted to kind of pay reference to that because from our undergraduates through to our professional services and into our um, academic communities, there has been this huge response about how can we make a difference. There has also been um, a focus on thinking about learning and inspiration, in inspiration, no, y yes, you know what I'm saying, um, inspiring others. And um, I'm just gonna talk you through a couple of what those activities look like. One of the things that we did centrally, and actually this came quite late in the piece, was something called lockdown lectures where um, we invited a number of our academics from across all of the different disciplines to um, take part in either a Q&A or a Q&A and a lecture about their subject matter that, that kind of is contextualized around COVID. But actually we wanted to not only hear about um, the science or the subject matter, we actually really wanted to find out who are these people. So we kind of modeled the lockdown lectures um, on an idea of the kind of story story collider and um, bringing the personal with the science with the person and really understanding these academics motivations for what they do and why they do it and I think um, to date that campaign has been quite successful and our next phase is to actually move into um, more diversity in terms of academics and early career researchers to be part of these lockdown lectures and to bring about an even more two-way opportunity for engagement. So running um, Twitter campaigns around Ask a Scientist, for example. Um, some of you may be aware of something called the Great Science Share. Now this activity, um, this program of activity has been running at the university for a number of years now. And I'm told that um, in 2019, there were over 63,000 school pupils and teachers involved in this from across 11 countries. And normally this would all culminate in a big event um, in June. And this year, um, they decided to take that online. So um, they've been doing exactly what they've been doing um, in previous years in terms of um, providing resources, running weekly themed campaigns, um, getting both uh, schools and individual pupils and celebrating those curious questions that they've been coming out with. And there's been Ask a Scientist and Ask an Engineer campaigns. Um, really interesting, the resources have now also been developed in Welsh. So if we're thinking about that inclusivity as well, well, I think this is a good example where we are thinking about what other languages might we want to perhaps be, um, uh, you know, putting our, our public engagement activity and our messaging and our comms out in. And then um, there's a number of activities that are inclusive for both teachers, for people at home and for uh, our scientists. And one of the things that's coming up that is still time for all of us to get involved in is the great um, science share groove. So um, I'll make sure there's links to all of this for you and you can uh, take part. You may be aware at Manchester that we have a number of cultural institutions, Manchester Museum, George Bank, uh, Rylands Library, um, uh, Jodrell Bank Science Centre, sorry, and uh, John Ryland's Library plus Whitworth. And very quickly in response to um, COVID-19, Manchester Museum came up with In Quarantine. And they've not only collated a whole set of existing assets and collections and objects and virtual tours of uh, things that they already had at hand, but they've launched citizen science projects. They're running um, activities for parent groups. So where, for example, 
example, you used to go into the museum and do a parent and toddler um, activity or meet with a researcher, they've now translated that all into um, Facebook and Instagram and kind of live join events, a little bit like the kind of Joe Wick stuff, but in the museum context. And then they've been doing these really interesting behind the scenes activities around um, uh, Friday frogs. Um, last week, I think they launched uh, uh, dinosaurs and finding out more about um, our collection and our paleontologists and uh, asking curious questions and also Egypt. I also wanted to highlight that um, so there's some central activities and then there's faculty and department activities and in our in our humanities we um, were already running a number of um, online activities in terms of international photography competitions. I think this one was themed around what does your family mean to you and international um, uh, poetry competitions. So there was already a natural move to be even making more of an online environment for that. As I mentioned, it's not only what's happening in our, in our faculties, but what's also happening in our schools. And our, our faculty of um, biology, science and, and, and health have really been um, looking at what they do in terms of their public and patient involvement work. So they've done a lot of activity around um, putting up challenges for people. So what does a particular word mean to you? Um, and uh, then helping to form a kind of more lay person's um, uh, definition and a set of understanding and really thinking about how we communicate and why we communicate and how do we make communication more accessible when it comes to the medical sciences. There's been a whole creation of new um, uh, online uh, MOOCs and uh, free resources. Um, we already had um, uh, Roger Harrison, who's very active in our antibiotic resistance set of campaigns and public engagement activity, look about, well, how could he actually take that topic and turn it into an online um, interactive forum? And we've also been tapping into those big um, world national days and then um, inviting people to comment on um, different aspects. Uh, Still more activity. I think the point about there are a lot of resources that are already out there, so let's not create the wheel, has really been taken up by people um, like Jodrell Bank Science Centre and our WP teams who've collated a whole set of rich resources that are then connected to curriculum or enhancing curriculum. And um, one of the big WP activities that happens at the university is our Manchester Access Programme. And normally that would be done uh, in the classroom on campus and uh, we'd be meeting with um, uh, tutoring potential students who may wish to come to university and that's all now moved into an online forum and so those points around safeguarding and management so even um, not so much writing new policies but guidelines for researchers about well you know think about even the place where you're going to be meeting you know meet in the kitchen or the dining room or the lounge room or in the garden maybe don't uh, meet in your bedroom, for example, and uh, think about the kind of professionalism of what you're doing. Um, in terms of the physical sciences, we've had a lot of um, ask the scientist kind of activity. And so um, our Manchester Physics Outreach Group, which is run primarily by undergraduates, have been running a whole campaign, campaign that has been connected to homeschooling. And um, academics such as Ben Parsloo um, have been uh, working with a whole host of um, different communities in terms of answering their questions around his particular discipline. And then we've always had a number of um, uh, podcasts. And what's been really interesting is the themes of the podcasts are now very much being shaped by um, the subscribers and those, those new audiences that they're connecting with nearly there. This is the point I wanted to make in terms of specifically a maths campaign and so as I said Naomi would be able to talk a little bit more to this but I think what's been really interesting is um, Naomi and her research group had a whole 
um, program of face-to-face -face activity that was um, set for 2021. And um, now they've really had to rethink what that looks like in an online world. And I just wanted to show you some of the diversity. So once again, they've got kind of meet the mathematicians, they've got download resources, they're connecting to big national and international days, they're setting out challenges. Um, I saw today actually that they've moved into the world of animation. And um, one of the things I personally quite like is every Monday you can um, have a check in with what the mystery sound for Monday is, and then that uh, gets revealed the next day. So I quite like that this is kind of showing um, the ability for maths to be part of all of our worlds, regardless of where we are, and to also maybe kind of break down some of those stereotypes about. Um, mathematicians and who they are and what they do and what they're about. I guess um, we're heading towards the last kind of slide here. Um, we've also had a number of academics who've been involved in external activities. So a lot of the science festivals have been paused, but Cheltenham made the decision to do science at home this year, and I won't have to name check some of these people, but um, a number of our academics have continued in that online environment to really share their enthusiasm, their experience, their knowledge, and um, to continue to connect with audiences. And one of the points I really wanted to highlight was getting us to think about what do we mean by good, effective science communication. And so if you've not yet signed up to the This Study Shows podcast, I would highly recommend going and having a, listening to, a listen to that. Because one of their activities, um, one of their themes was definitely about communicating during COVID and um, what we should be thinking about in terms of accessibility and messaging and purpose and audience and need. So really picking up on the previous speaker there. That is pretty much it from a slide perspective. Um, really lots of existing activity um, that has been curated, lots of activity, new activity, but within the means of what we can do within our homes. And also um, a real sense of creating um, and extending our communities have been some of the big focus at Manchester. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I, I feel like I was watching that and thinking, oh, I wonder if I could do a thing like that. You know, there was there were a lot of different ideas and a lot of different things going on in there um, that kind of, especially if it's if it's not a type of outreach that a department's done before, kind of thinking about ways to either adapt existing things or, or do something maybe a bit new. Um, obviously, all of this, I should clarify, is dependent on people having the capacity to do this, because I know that this is an incredibly busy time for uh, for everyone and there's lots of stuff going on and everything is 10 times harder. Um, but, you know, with with the proviso that you're, you, you know, capable of doing extra stuff, it's really nice sort of, uh, there's a lot of challenges to rise to, I guess, there's a lot of different options for what to do. Um, Okay, so I'm going to hand on to our final speaker now, who is going to tell us about what's going on at UCL. Uh, it's Luciano Rila. Right. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Luciano Rila. I'm a senior teaching fellow at UCL. Um, I've also worked for FMSP slash AMSP for 12 years, and I stepped down in uh, the end of April. So that's, um, and term, the summer term is when I run a lot of events, summer schools, uh, some teacher training events, and it's all been canceled. So at the start of lockdown, I didn't have anything to do. Um, and, you know, but then slowly, um, we in the department started thinking what we could do as outreach and there was also a lot of pressure from UCL powers that be uh, to engage with our applicants. Obviously there's a lot of concern about how many applicants will um, materialize in more ways than one as uh, students. So in that context, uh, one of the um, priorities that we had was uh, to find a way of engaging with our applicants. So that was one of the first thing we thought. Um, 
and maybe going against all the other speakers, <laughs> we decided to produce new resources. <laughs> um, so uh, the first thing we decided to do was to launch, which hasn't happened yet, we're going to do next week, we're going to launch a YouTube channel for the department. Um, I think I have a link, there's nothing there, but if you want to have a look and subscribe, and then there'll be um, some videos next week. And, uh, and what we decided was to try and uh, uh, make it, some of the things that we do, try and make it um, a remote version of it. So uh, we offer year, problem solving classes for year 12 students. So this is going to be one of the series that we're going to do. And that's the first one we're going to launch. Uh, it will be 10 videos and it's been done by one of the PhD students who runs the year 12 problem solving classes for us. Um, and actually I'm going to share another link. The first, P, uh, the same PhD student is called David Sheard. Um, he also runs the London Maths Outreach, and that's got nothing to do with the department. Well, it's got something to do with the department, but it's not a departmental effort. Um, and Dave, as well, um, and let me share that. Right, so this is the web page. So what they did, so I'm showing that because the, the YouTube channel will be kind of similar. They also have a YouTube channel. So this is the home page, and this is David. Um, but they have online courses. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So this is just, you know, this is not my work. Um, but this is, so this is a, a full course. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it's all there. But there are a series of videos, and then there are exercises attached to it and then the next video and so on. So they tried to, so they run these courses um, face to face normally. So they tried to, well, they are trying to make them now a remote course. And I think they're doing a very, very good job. And David is doing all the videos for us for the 12 problem solving um, series for the YouTube channel. So that was the first thing we, did and probably the major thing right so so that's the youtube channel um and there'll be a series for uh step questions as well that another phd student is going to do for us um we are running departmental open days and they're live um we weren't well i'm not going to put words in anyone's mouth but i wasn't I didn't think they were going to be successful. Um, it's basically our admissions tutor giving a talk for about 20 minutes with slides, you don't see his face. So it's all very impersonal. Um, and then there is a chat room. So it's even more impersonal, but I was surprised how successful it was. It was well attended. The students asked lots of questions and um, we have a team of people uh, from the department that attend those days to try and answer all the questions and it was surprisingly successful it was you know very simple not offensive format in any way but i think it worked very well um what else I've, other things i've been doing than myself we offer uh, um step support to our applicants and i run two face-to-face -face study days and obviously the face-to-face -face days were cancelled and i delivered four lectures online using um, big blue button which is like blackboard collaborate um, through amsp actually well through mei uh, i did that and that is i don't know if you ever taught online but um I have I had done a lot of that before. 
So that was quite straightforward. It was a live session. Um, I feel that it's pretty much like delivering a lecture, really. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, what else? And the other thing I want to mention, and I don't know if it's relevant, I had also a personal project because I run a maths club for the primary school kids in my neighborhood called House of Mathmos. I'm wearing the t-shirt. And I used teams and two cameras and we did lots of fun activities. The kids loved it and I loved it. We had 14 sessions, it was like seven weeks. And then I basically ran out of material and the kids had to go back to school online, you know, and anyway. So it was finished, but it was great. Um, it was really, really, it was the most exciting thing I did during lockdown. So that's, that's it for me. Fantastic, thank you very much. Uh, so, I, yeah, uh, for some reason, muting is completely eluding me today. Uh, I have been advised that when I'm doing live uh, stuff, I should keep that human aspect where you make a mistake. So um, that's what I'm deliberately doing, just to be clear with everyone. Uh, this was in last week's session, was one of the bits of advice from Fran. Uh, so um, thank you very much to all of our speakers. So it's, I think it's, it's good to sort of hear a few different perspectives on this, because I suspect uh, different universities have different levels of resource and different levels of capability for this kind of thing. Um, but I'm sure there are plenty of uh, questions. I've seen a couple of questions in the Q&A uh, going in in amongst some of these links and things which hopefully Sam has been keeping an eye on um, but if you have got any other questions for our speakers we've got time for uh, potentially a few questions before the hour and then we'll have a little break and then we can carry on with any of the speakers that are able to stick with us beyond four o'clock uh, with any other questions as well so I'm going to hand over to Sam for Q&A.